Now there's a few series of deadlines beforehand that, that we're trying to meet, but May 2nd is our drop dead uh, date. So um, with 30 days, you can't do task A and then task B and then task C. You have to do A through Z all at the same time. So part of the reason why we asked to have this meeting was to update people that have showed interest. And at the same time, uh, go ahead, sit down. Come on in. Oh, do we have any more chairs? Keep talking. Yeah, so the um, so yeah. purpose of this was to update people on, on where we've been, how far we've come, and where we need to go. Uh, if you have an agenda, I'll just go uh, straight from the top. Uh, the engineering and design. Pretty much everyone has heard the story that the bridge is. Oh, can I wait? Can I stop? Can I... Sorry, I was out here, so I couldn't, couldn't, couldn't say one thing I would say. So we're not doing. Um, we're giving an update, but uh, at the end, we're going to need a million different ideas to get this going. We need everybody to join a team. So if anything sounds interesting to you, if anything's missing, <laughs> there will be things missing because uh, we're trying to get this done really fast. So. We're going to try to get through the update as quick as possible so everybody's kind of aware of what's going on, and then uh, hopefully we'll get everybody involved as quickly as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> and, and, yeah. So, um, engineering. <clears throat> Everyone has heard that the bridge is ready for collapse. Uh, there was one report done by Hillsborough County and then subsequent peer reviews. That one report focused on the low span approaches of the bridge. The bridge is built in three different sec sections. There are the 48 feet on center spans that are considered the low approach. Uh, those have a pile that goes into the water, a pile cap that connects the piles, and then a 48 foot roadbed with beams underneath it. The focus of the report focused on that particular section of the bridge. Not only that section, it focused on the girders of the bridge. It didn't address any of the other parts of the structure. Also, it didn't address the, the approach to the home and the hump itself, the part that goes over the channel. A part of our design idea is to say that the girders are bad. Okay, we have the reports for this. The girders are bad. Let's either A, fix those girders and repair them and, and make them better. Or B, go ahead and take that part off. Keep the hump and keep the approach. Keep the piles and come back with a new structure. Those are our two strategies right now. We don't want for the county to invest $5 million to tear out the entire bridge when only really 10% of the bridge needs help. Um, and that's kind of where we're approaching, uh, approaching this from, saving the bridge and uh, moving forward. And I think just to we've had a, We've had an engineer that's done uh, numerous projects with the state, with the county. Uh, he and I were, and Paul, there, we're out on the boat um, on Wednesday doing a visual review, and uh, he confirms our assessment that most of the bridge is still intact um, and perfectly fine. So uh, he and I are going to work in the next week to come up with uh, multiple strategies on saving the bridge. That's the in-depth report on the engineering side, uh, and which, which you know, to go backwards. Um, a lot of times when you do these things, these grassroots events, you're always trying to tell people why. Why should? Why is the bridge important? Why this? Why that? Why? Why should we recreate? Why should we have a creative economy? Why should we should all do these things? And no one is asking why in this. No one's asking why should it be saved. Everyone wants it to be saved. What we're addressing is how to save it. Um, and I think that's the really critical part that um, we're focusing the engineering on is how do we actually save the bridge? Not why do we say it?